I am Gopi Patel. I'm an infectious diseases physician here at Mount Sinai Hospital and the hospital epidemiologist at the Mount Sinai Hospital. I'm also the medical director for antimicrobial stewardship for the Mount Sinai Health System. Vaccines are very interesting. They basically expose us to parts or pieces of um, either a bacteria or a virus, and our body mounts an immune response. We make antibodies toward those pieces. The goal is that our body will have memory to have seeing, seeing those pieces and um, be able to fight off with those antibodies that we made any exposure to the real bacteria or virus. The FDA and all the pharmaceutical companies, as well as scientists who are involved in vaccine development and the production of guidelines, all are very um, committed to making sure a safe and efficacious vaccine, once available, is made available. Um, there is rigorous testing for all vaccines. They make sure that they're safe, they monitor for adverse events or side effects, and they are to be very transparent in those um, events. So for all vaccines that are currently FDA approved and available, any side effect or vaccine adverse event is reported. In the setting of clinical trials where they're looking at these vaccines, those adverse events are recorded and monitored by safety monitoring boards. Before anything becomes available for the public, whether it's under an emergency use authorization or through the FDA, that data will be made available and will be quite transparent. The goal is a safe and effective COVID-19 vaccine. It's hard to say. Currently, the recommendation from the FDA is that if a COVID vaccine is made available, that at least there is a 50% efficacy with that vaccine. That means when you compare the vaccine um, the patients or persons who got vaccine to those individuals who didn't get the vaccine or got what we call a placebo, that there's 50% less cases of COVID-19 in the group that received the vaccine. So I think we're going to learn a lot more um, in terms of when it becomes available. I also think there's a lot of questions about how many individuals need to be vaccinated to have what we call herd immunity or where the community immunity affects um, whether the vaccine has been efficacious and prevents a lot of cases of COVID-19. Herd immunity is this idea that you can protect vulnerable populations if most of the population gets vaccinated and develops an immune response. We talk about this a lot with something, um, something that hit us very hard here in New York in 2019, measles. In that case, when most people are vaccinated, we're able to protect those individuals who cannot get vaccinated, the very young or those people who, are, um, who have immune systems that can't respond to the vaccine. So that's the idea of herd immunity. It is very unclear at this point what herd immunity means for COVID-19. It may be that a lot of people may make antibodies, but we also have to make sure people don't transmit infection. So that is something that we're going to have to explore more and only time will tell. So the things that we ask people to do, like mask up, wash your hands, and watch your distance is really important even in the setting of a vaccine. So we're very lucky at the Mount Sinai Health System um, is it, that we are actually involved in trials of COVID-19 vaccine. We've been involved in um, one of the trials looking at one of the top vaccine candidates or the one, one of the most advanced vaccine candidates and we're starting enrollment in other trials soon. So we are prepared in terms of looking at the safety and efficacy of the, uh, the four vaccines that um, are most advanced in phase three clinical trials. We are looking at how we would distribute and allocate vaccine. Please remember that these would be under an emergency use authorization and not necessarily FDA approved. So what would that look like if we were to get an allocation of vaccine? Who would we offer vaccination to? How would we monitor those individuals and make sure that we offer it to those who are most vulnerable to getting COVID-19 um, infection, whether it be in the community or in the healthcare setting. Um, we know our healthcare workers are at risk, but we also know there are essential workers outside of healthcare 
who may be at risk too. We're working with our public health authorities, whether it be New York State or New York City Departments of Health, and watching closely at the safety and efficacy data. We actually have members of um, our school faculty who are working with New York State on the safety and efficacy and evaluation of any vaccine candidate that um, becomes available in the next few months.